Alright guys, welcome back to DIY Hydroponic Doser. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick update to show you what I've done uh, since my last video. I know it's been a long time, but I've had my daughter's birthday, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. Um, but, uh, start off, I've cleaned up the rat's nest here that I had with all those little uh, jump cables. And uh, I've used a set of these guys that I bought off Amazon, uh, different colors, because I do like my colors. I like to be consistent at what it is that I'm wiring up to a particular color. Um, so I'm going to actually build up a schematic view of all the wiring for this particular doser setup. Um, I call this doser setup a fixed channel. Um, that means that there is a fixed size limit, so if you exceed that fixed size limit, it has to do a repetitive motion of pumping it out and pulling more until it meets the overall desired solution amount that you want out of that. Um, a non-fixed type would be like a peristaltic pump, which just continuously rotates, um, and I think it pumps out 100 milliliters per minute. So um, based off that sort of timing convention, um, you can work out, you know, a solution amount and how long to spin that continuous motor that is not fixed at any amount other than how long you give it power. Um, this setup is outrageously complicated. This is just, I mean, we built actuator arms, basically what we've done here, um, that hook into syringes and then um, all the logic for um, how to, how long to rotate or how many rotations it takes to uh, reach a, a fixed channel or the amount that you want in the solution and start pushing and pulling. Um, I mean, all that sort of setup is just way, way too much for the average person at home to set up, and I understand that. But there are some people out there that have huge hydroponic systems that do have this sort of system in mind. So when I was building my operating system for the Arduino, I did want to go all out and build this sort of setup so that I could accommodate for um, fixed channel sizes at the most extreme level, ta-da, um, and then peristaltic pumps, which is probably the most cheapest level, and one of those pumps is like 12 bucks on Amazon, and I recently just ordered one, which will be arriving Friday, and I will be hooking into the relay here and bypassing all these chips and this first channel just to finish off the um, latter half of my OS buildup that I'm doing right now um, to support those pump types. So um, to answer all the questions I've been getting so far, yes, my operating system will support both fixed channels at the most extreme level and peristaltic pumps, which is a continuous channel or pump. Um, one of the other updates I've done is, I don't know if I had this in my last video or not, but um, the memory on the Arduino board, the EEPROM, I mean, it's, it's good to store things on, and I believe I could have got away with it um, if we would have capped the amount of sessions that you could have per crop but I didn't want to do that. Um, also, you have the, a limit on how many times I believe that you can read from an EEPROM, um, and so ultimately it would fail eventually, not, um, you know, is it likely to fail? It would ultimately fail. Um, there's just a fixed amount of times that you can read from that, and that would require people to get a new Arduino board, and that sucks. So we pulled all that off of into a memory card, and that's what's telling me right now that I don't have my memory card in to go forth with setting up the OS. Um, so with a memory card in there, the OS can be installed on it and you can build, run, edit, and share crops off of that. Um, we also have a real-time clock hooked up to it now. Um, so if there's any power that goes out, um, the cl internal clock doesn't get lost um, and all of your sessions and your sort of crop remains ready to go when the power comes back on. Um, the other thing is, is that we have the pH, I'm sorry, the EC and PPM uh, sensor here uh, that I've gotten hooked up and configured to the OS. So the OS can basically listen to um, the fine tune option you have on this guy right here to calibrate it. So what I've done here is I used a Blue Lab solution, uh, 2.77 EC, and I'm I'm doing a 500. Um, we, you can configure that however you like through a little spindle there. 
Um, what I also have arriving uh, this weekend is the other sensor, which is the pH sensor, which will be hooked up right here. And that will be reading the pH levels. Um, and we have extended the OS um, to allow you to autonomously um, run the PPM and EC. Um, so basically it will listen to what you've configured on each channel session and um, based on the runoff water um, it will diagnose how much the plants have taken up of the nutrients and if it's the plants aren't taking up as much as you know you would like through your EC range that you set up then it will start to suggest or autonomously downgrade um, your amounts that you've set in there so that the next time it doses you know, it brings it down and it's not too harsh for the plants and vice versa if it's too low and like if it, the runoff comes out with you know damn near no nutrients then it knows to probably increase those ever so slightly um, but it won't exceed a range that you configured inside of the OS um, pH uh, same thing um, the challenge is how how a person is going to use the doser itself are you going to be using this to dose a reservoir and then using the reservoir to fill up and top off your plants in a hydroponic system? Or are you gonna be using this to directly hook into the plants themselves and continuously monitor the plants real time? I mean, the OS is built to sort of accommodate both setups. Um, so we basically extended out the pH to um, allow you to be a scheduled pH. So um, you just, you dedicate one, uh, two of these channels for your pH and P down, or pH down and basically as those sessions come up um, for the time on those arrive to be dosed it just does those um, however if you flip the settings in the OS to be you know, autonomous um, it's going to ask you to fully dedicate two channels so that you can't set any sessions up on these channels and it's continuously monitoring um, a water source that you have and if the water source gets above or below a range of pH it's going to make a decision on to either um, you know, pH it down or pH it up. Um, typically it's probably going to be pH down because pH usually goes up in almost every scenario. But we have two channels for that just in case. Um, some of the other updates is we have the shelf hooked up to it now and you can see I have the water lines I've drilled holes at the back of the shelf. This whole system is laying down on its, its back right now but it's going to be hanging up on a wall and so that shelf makes sense and it's on this shelf that I'll be setting my different solutions containers on and I'll be feeding those hoses into the solutions and then um, gravity itself will just allow the ease of the solutions to come down these hoses through those holes I've made in between each channel into this dual check valve I built right here. And this is probably the part that people have been asking a lot about too is these dual check valves. Um, how we were planning on making it push and pull from a, a solution source into a water source. And so this is just a basic T valve and I got these uh, one wave easy uh, no PSI required valves on Amazon and I'll put that in my GitHub wiki buy list. Again this is really only something for fixed channels you won't really um, need this for a peristatic pump. I can't really ever say that right peristaltic pump, I think that's right. Um, but regardless, I do want to you know, have a, a list for both pump types so people can build either one as they need. And so as the solution comes down or gets pulled through the one-way valve uh, into here, into the solution, and gets measured out, or into the channel and gets measured out, um, when it reaches the max size it knows to stop and push the solution out and these little one-way valves prevent it from backfilling back into there and gets pushed out here. And out here could be long hoses going into a reservoir or again as I said directly into the plants themselves. Hopefully that's the idea. Um, yeah, the other thing was uh, these were built to sort of wedge these syringes in place However, um, these are squishy. I mean, they're not really firm plastic, not as firm as I anticipated. 
And so what I've done is I've, I've unscrewed them from the board and I spread them out a little bit so that it wasn't screwed down with it clamped in place and I left them a little loose. And then I used these little broccoli rubber bands to, um, I doubled them up at the top here to make it so that there is um, surface tension so that when this gets pulled or pushed, it doesn't slide anywhere. But it's also not pushing this, preventing the motor from having to work extra hard as the, um, the syringe reaches the top here. Because when it was wedged in there, it was sort of tapered. And as this reached the max, or started to reach 100 milliliters, the motor was just starting to slip because it was just way too much for that. So those unwedged a bit and using surface tension, those don't go anywhere. And then for sheer measure or for extra measure, I just went ahead and wrapped some uh, broccoli rubber bands around the top here so that they don't, when this gets hung up in the wall, it, these are really in there good. And they're all level all the way down. All right, guys. Uh, so what I'm planning on doing by the end of this weekend is getting the uh, pH reader finished up and configured for the OS. And um, I also have two electric ball valves that are gonna be arriving and we'll be using uh, the remaining channels. Is it um, one, two, three, four, five, six channels here um, that you can dedicate to if you want uh, a drainage system. So you can uh, actually dedicate up to six different electric ball valves to basically maintain when you want all of your hydroponic plants to be flushed completely and then refilled with your reservoir water um, or you could um, hook up a nether sensor for water level in your actual plant system uh, hydroponics plant system so that it, it knows when the water level has gotten down because the um, plants have taken up a lot of nutrients and just to top it off or do both actually so a whole drainage and top off system is coming soon too. So if you have any questions or um, would like to see some additional features in the OS that I'm building, go ahead and uh, check out the link in the description below to my GitHub page. And don't forget to hit like to the video, guys. See you soon.